Hello and welcome to Exceptional TV. My name is Karen Judd Smith, creator of the Legendary Leadership Formula and a Change Leaders Mentor, and I'm your host. Our focus here is on the people who lead, who make a difference, and who very often are the ones who make good trouble, as John Lewis did throughout his life. These people are not always those with great titles or formal positions. So often, they are powerfully driven by a sense of social justice and a profound belief in the value and potential of each person. What we do here each week is to take time to look beneath the surface, to dig into the deeper currents of their lives and their thinking and their experience, and importantly, to highlight the clues their successes have left behind. One of the ways we honor others' lives after all and to value our own, is to learn from one another's strengths and successes as we go about making our world a better place day by day. With each week, we explore the, these lives, lessons learned, and insights of remarkable individuals who make a difference. The powerful thing about these people is that they know how they've found ways that through their drive and passion, but uh, it's, it's more than just their drive and passion. They find a gap in the world that they're determined to, to bridge. And I have another one of these very same people who have found a gap and uh, in, in, in who we are and what we do. And that's in our, in our capacity is as human beings to make good decisions, no matter how smart we are, right? Anyway, so before we get into this, I would just like to say that I have invited Erica all the way from London, Sweden, to join us today. And uh, so before I say too much more or say anything that is incorrect about her, I'd like to, first of all, welcome you uh, to Exceptional TV, Erica, and uh, to invite you to tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, where is Lund? I think we've got an idea of where Sweden is. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about you, um, your and 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 your life and how you ended up bridging the gap between um, what we want to do and and what we actually decide to do. Welcome, Erica. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joy to be here. <laughs> You've given me you give me questions that could fill the whole hour, but I won't. Lund, Sweden. It's not in Switzerland. That's the first thing I need to say because I thought I said, I thought I said sw Sweden. I meant to say Sweden. <laughs> you did say Sweden. You did say Sweden. But many people think that Sweden is the same as Switzerland, but it's not. Ah, oh, like Austria and Australia. Yes, yes. I come across Austria it all the time. has little signs that says no kangaroos here. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. But I'm from Sweden and I work as an associate professor at the University of Lund in philosophy of religion. That's my, my specialty. And I specialize in religious language and reality and questions about what is real yeah. and what we value. And values is, of course, linked to making decisions. So it all comes together. Hmm. But how I did... Uh, how, how I did get into the gap between our the 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 the, poss the, hmm, the ability to make good decisions, right? That's a, that's a lifelong story, really. Well, tell us. You know, I mean, you don't have to start the day you were born, uh, <laughs> but, but, but I mean, but seriously, there. Are, I, I I know that there are very, usually there are very significant moments in our lives that that mm. do you know, shift our track in our lives. Yes. So give us, you know, some insight into some of those. I'd love to hear. Yes. I mean, as a, as a child, I had dreams. I guess you had to, everyone has dreams when they are mm -hmm. children. And I dreamt about, you won't believe this, I dreamt about growing blueberries. I was a peculiar child. I dreamt about growing blueberries and live in East Africa and become a, a great scientist discovering the secrets of the human cell. That was my childhood dreams. And that's that's why you have blueberry colored shirt on. <laughs> yes, yes. Maybe. It's actually, I spilt it on. <laughs> no. But then, then I grew up and became, you know, a late, late teenager. And I got very religious, which 
that could be a good thing, but sometimes it's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, as teenagers are, it's all black or white. Right, right. And, and We're I all really, in or... Yes, yes, really all in. And I was really all in. So I wanted, I, don't, I didn't want to follow my own dreams. I wanted to follow God's will. Mm. And I thought, I believe they were different things because as a human being, I couldn't possibly have the right, right wishes, the right dreams. So I tried to suppress my own dreams I suppress wow. my own wishes myself mm. really to be to become more godlike and and that was i don't recommend doing that because uh, i mean if if there is a god and if god created pe human being to to god's likeness then we could trust our dreams also but let's not go into that i'm a theologian but let, let's not go into that right and, and 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 in all transparency i've got a little bit theological stuff in there too from my background but, mm. but just to throw that one thing in is if you know using some of the more traditional concepts there if we are in some way in, in God's image and unique then it's it's kind of like a little bit of God yes so yes. you know you can't demolish you or you're demolishing a little bit of your uniqueness is an expression of that yeah exactly so what I did is not really <laughs> wasn't good at all but what happened was that during a, a couple of years of uh, some years I I practiced not not wanting what I want wanted right and all of a sudden I, I realized that I didn't I didn't know what I wanted anymore hmm. even, even if I tried in the in the beginning it was more like trying not to want but after a while it was like even if I try to find out what I wanted, and even in simple things, do I want to watch this movie or that movie? Well, I don't know. I don't care. I, I can't really say. Right. And so so that that made me think, and that made me go on a quest later in life for for meaning and passion. What is it that drives my life? What is it that I want from life? And of course, that brings us into all the, the big existential questions. What is the meaning of my life? Why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And back to the big questions. Back yeah. to the questions. But they are, they are big, but they are also very, very narrow because no one can answer them but, but you, but me, sort of from, right. from deep, within, deep within. So that's where I try to, uh, that's where I found, found that everything we do starts with a decision, right? We don't do Absolutely. anything. Right. Yeah, we, we, we have to decide, we have to choose what to do. And if we don't choose, because it's difficult, sometimes it's very difficult, so we just stay, because we don't, right. know, we don't know what we want. We don't know, and if, we don't, if I don't know what I want, how can I then decide? And we do, if we don't have a process for clarification. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I started to get into decision making a lot yeah. both philosophically theologically and of course psychologically and neuroscience right. the neuroscience of today is fantastic oh, it's, it's blowing up and it's yeah it's 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 really changing and i think it's also the intersection um of neuroscience and our everything that's going on especially with computer programming ai mm -hmm. um you know it, it there's this enormous intersection of understanding decision making propensities you know <laughs> attitudes uh yes. and all of that and there's some fascinating stuff about uh, artificial intelligence that, that mm -hmm. comes absolutely back into decision making and who's making the decision and who's framing the options exactly. so yeah so um so your journey took you through to the, these big questions, which are now, you know, the, the, we tend to think of even in, in the uh, scientific world, we tend to think of, of geeks and whatever as very nuts and bolts and, and um, rational and whatever. But very quickly, they're all coming back into ethical questions and um, questioning their own questions and trying to understand what big data is really doing and mm -hmm. where are we going with it. So these are all coming back to, you know, asking these same big questions. So yeah, take us along this journey a little bit further because I think it's a really important one to for people to think about and to consider, mm. yeah. 
Yeah, I think so too. And you could say that f- philosophy of mind mm-hmm. and the, neuro, the, the neuroscience of today, they are, they are getting together in a, in a new kind of dance right. in, this, in the field of decision making and our consciousness. Uh, yeah, yeah so, you're right, right. So it's not only one or the other, but the, right. we, need, we need each other, which is really, right. really great. Yeah. And as you say before, philosophers and, and everyone really thought that decision decisions should be made from a purely rational standpoint. No emotions. Right, right. That no, no, yeah. Leave no, it all nothing out. Nothing like that, <laughs> yes. And that's, of course, also why women were seen to be less capable mm-hmm. of making the big decisions in politics and because we're so any emotional. kind of yeah because we were so emotional <laughs> and now i mean granted that we are more emotional which is of course debatable but granted that we are more emotional that oh, but we, we express that. those emotions more yes. more likely to express the emotions but we i think do. you know um the emotional content in a human being is probably just as much there in a male as a female yes i'd say that too that's why i sort of wanted this kp Mm -hmm. but but granted that we are it's actually an advantage in decision making because it turns out that we cannot even make a decision without access to our emotions there are there are studies about from of people who've suffered a brain damage Mm -hmm say from an, a surgery or something like that. And when their prefrontal, pre, pre-orbital, <laughs> sorry, I just lost it. <laughs> <laughs> the orbital frontal lobe, whatever. Yeah, something right. Something that is behind the eye. That, that's the area where emotions come together with the rational uh, outcomes of decision-making. Yeah, I think you had it right, preorbital frontal lobe. I, yeah, I yeah, I think yeah. it's something like that. <laughs> so it's just, uh, but anyway, when that when that area is damaged and the emotions and the decisions sort of don't don't meet, those people cannot. They have severe difficulties coming, making up the mind, coming to decision, and they can spend hours and hours on end debating whether to wear a blue or or gray shirt or you know to park your car here or there just very simple decisions that they just can't make up their mind there's nothing wrong with the intelligence as you said in the beginning we can be very very smart right and they can make analysis and and pros and cons and everything risk analysis and all of that (laughs) but when it comes to actually making the decision they they, need they can't get over that that Because there's always a barrier to entry of almost anything, even to the barrier to entry to making a decision. And I guess it's that emotional. uh, Yes. Putting it in a very, I'm sure that's a very scientific explanation. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we need, we need the dopamine, that emotions and the other, uh, that emotions uh, let us get into action that motivate us. Well, in a, I guess uh, um, what uh, just an image comes to mind, and, and I know this is this is not a, a, a proper biological description, but I mean just the fact that our our, our nerves we always have we have this synaptic space for uh, you know for the the uh, the signal to go along the whole nerve as a whole. It's got to go all of the, over those little gaps. Mm-hmm. If it can't jump the gap, the signal doesn't go, and nothing happens so there's got to be that that you know it's you know maybe it's it's some kind of a parallel to that or that that the emotions gives the, the you know that impetus that energy mm. to jump yes. the gap that that in a way a decision is you're jumping you're, you're taking a leap exactly you take a leap of faith from... if you want to get religious yes if you want to go with Kierkegaard too you, you have to embrace. You have to embrace the the yeah. uncertainty. The future. Yeah. I mean, the future is always right. uncertain. Right. And if if it, if it wasn't, we would never need to make any decisions because it would always be pre, you know, preset for us. And that wouldn't right. that be boring? That would be so boring. It would not only be boring. I'm not sure that that's the way it is. But <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But as as it is always uncertain. Yeah. That's something we need to count on in our, in our decision making and and. Right. 
and not let it bog us down. So we get trapped in this analysis paralysis where we, right. we can't take the next step because we don't know it all, but we can never know it all. So right. I think we could just relieve ourselves of that stress and say that's all in the hands of the future. What I can do at the moment is take into account everything that is known to me now. I can make research, I can gather information. And I can keep analysis. making research and I can keep getting information and pushing yes. off the decision. Oh. <laughs> that's true, but that, that's when you have to make the, uh, the these <laughs> sort of thing. What if, I mean, if, if you make it too, the decision too fast and you think there is, there's more information to get, there's more research that I can do, you risk you risk making a, an error of commission. You commit an error that can mm -hmm. have, if you make the wrong decision, the not mm -hmm. optical, optimal. Right. But on right. the other hand, if you take too long making the decision, you risk making a, an error of omission. Mm. When you, you lose out of opportunities, you, you simply have to weigh that, which is the worst. Sometimes, at some stage, you need to find a balance. If I wait too long, okay, I take... Yep. So you really are taking the black and white out of life. Yes, there is no black and white in life. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so more of a, a teeter totter, as I think they call them in America, a seesaw. Um, a seesaw. You know, yes. It's where we're looking at a balancing act, a constant. Yes. You know, and I guess I, in my little world. Um, I've spent a number of years working on, on boats for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. And life at sea is constant movement. You're, yeah. you're just constantly regaining your balance. It's yeah. incessant. There is yeah. no hard ground. So, you know, I guess that's also why I like the analogy of the ocean for a lot of our, our life's journey is because mm. there are no dotted lines in the ocean, you know, no road, follow no. The, no, <laughs> no street signs. Um, and it's a constant flux and movement. Um, yes. Yeah. That's a, that's a really good image. Yeah. Because I really think so. But when you, when you're stuck there and you don't, you don't know what decision to make mm -hmm. and you wait Mm. things will change all the time so you that you will never arrive at that still point yeah where no. everything is stable mm. because always new things will happen mm. and uh yeah i when you said about that about the boats and the ocean yeah i got another image and that was i remember when my my son was a baby my my first and only and as I, a new mother, I didn't know anything. So, <laughs> right. you know, the first I week. I remember that, that moment. <laughs> yes, you do. You do. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, you know, after a couple of weeks, I sort of said to myself, okay, now I know the rhythm. So two hours mm. sleep and then the food and then the goo and this and that. And finally, okay, good. I know it now. Now I know what to do. And then, then something happened. Yeah, then, of course, he grew. <laughs> yes. The next week he was older and he needed more food. <laughs> and the next week he did, he did less right. sleep. And every right. time I thought, now I know it. Now I know what to do. He grew. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it changed. And, and you changed. And, and I and, changed. And you had, you had shifted positions. So, yeah. yeah. Yes. So that frustration of never knowing what is the right thing to do, I think it's better to embrace it right. than to feel this Want very, very strong frustration, yeah. yes, yeah. and expect to arrive at that certainty because it, it won't come. And if it comes, if it comes, it's just for a second, then it goes <laughs> right, off. Right, right, right. It's very fleeting. Yeah. Yes, yes, uh, yes, and I, I still remember my moment kind of like that, only it was uh -huh. a little bit more, I, I said I said to, you know, the, the three-week-old or whatever, I said, hey, buddy, you haven't done this before. And I haven't done this before. So <laughs> let's make a deal. <laughs> we'll figure it out together. Okay. And, and he said, I don't know what, but anyway, yeah. that was the deal yeah. that I made with him. Anyway, <laughs> I think we're deal. still, I think after 30 some years, we're still figuring that out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, That's good. That's a good attitude. And I think having that attitude, that mindset mm. will take a lot of stress out of the decision-making. Because often, often I think we tend to believe that our decisions are irretrievable and they are for the for eternity. Mm, especially, I guess, for if if we've had that um, religious training. Yes, it's a, 
the destiny sort of way. You have, there's only one right path to choose. And if you right. go the wrong way, there's you ruin yeah. your life. But it's life or death. Yeah. Yes. But I don't believe that's yeah. but I don't believe that's true, really. Right. And many, many times you can um you can you can you can regret a decision. There's right. a cost the cost a cost of quitting, but that that differs. I mean, if you're if you're contemplating buying a house, of course the, you, you need to think a lot and, and take a lot of things. Right, because it, it's it's harder to it's harder. But if yeah. you're contemplating renting a house, you can spend less time fussing about the decision. Every because, every detail, yeah. Yes, every detail. Because if you do make the sort of wrong decision and you find out later that oh no, they, this this wasn't the best one, you could you you have your freedom within you know two months or three months, whatever it takes. So of, of, oftentimes we, before making a decision, we, we do well in calculating the, the potential costs of quitting mm. our later situation. And, and if that cost is not too big, then... No, no, it's, so it's a kind of risk management you've got. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, kind of, you're yeah. saying, yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're quietly not... not on a blackboard outlining a number of, of things about decision-making. Um, so tell us a little bit more. I mean, you're, you're already into it, uh, you know. So yeah, tell us a, a little bit more if you want to do it in a more, you know, bullet point way, or if you've got some key points that, you know, a key point, because I think sometimes we get so much information and we can all jump on Google and go, you know, say mm. uh, decision making, uh, 10 points about decision making. So you could itemize the 10 points, but perhaps um, if you can uh, give, some, you know, some, uh, maybe just, a, you know, a couple of really things that you found uh, can help people get a, a, a better grip on how to not be bad decision makers because <laughs> because you're talking about the cost of it and I mean and, and is doing some kind of cost analysis is that a good thing or or not what do you what do you recommend okay. what are some thoughts yeah that is also I mean it all depends on what kind of decision it is and what person you are right. of course but what I would say is that it's a good thing to take to take a holistic approach mm -hmm. to the decision you're making and it's not one size fits all. Mm -hmm. And it's not about learning one specific model because there are, there are, there are lots of models to, to weigh sort of business decisions and risk analysis and things right. like that. And right. they're good, right. they're good. Yeah. Applied to specific situations. Right. But I would say that it's the very first thing you should do if you want to make good decisions is to become clear of what you want and about your values in mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Because I think you said it, but that decision making is is like a gap. You have a situation mm -hmm. where you are at the moment, right? And you're not satisfied with that, because and you want to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Maybe you live live in a too small house, and you want some. You want more space. Mm -hmm. You want to buy or rent. You, you want more space, and that's a destination. And the decision is how you bridge that gap. And then mm -hmm. you come up with a lot of alternatives. How do I get more space? I mean, you could buy a bigger house. You could, right, right. you could rent a house. You could sell your belongings so that you don't need, so that you get more <laughs> yep. space. I mean, you could, you could, you could divorce or, or send away your children. So you, you, I mean, there are all sorts of things if you brainstorm. There, 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 are, there are actually, yeah, yeah, yes. things. So that, it, it, the first, like the first thought about getting, you know, more space, you very quickly went from things that I normally think about to things that that absolutely are options, but they're not my go-to place for thinking about it. Yeah. No, because that's, so once you're clear, but if you're not clear on where you want to go, many people think that the decision is, um, they confuse the, the destiny, which I say here, the destiny is I want more space. Right. With, with one of the alternatives. So they say, okay, we are too crowded here. So we need a bigger house. And, what are the alternatives right. to get a bigger house? We get a loan, we can, you know, find a bigger house. But then they, they confuse the solution, the gap with, this, with, with the ultimate destiny. So what you want is very important to get clear on. Right. Why do you want, why do you want out of this cramped little space right. that you live right. in? What is, is it, it about because, that? Yeah. 
Yes. And that that need, that um, desired state that you want to end up in, then you can may find surprising solutions that could give you that result. And that's why in decision making, when you once you become clear on where you want to go, then the next thing is to find as many, to brainstorm as many options as possible. And not only from your own perspective, but it's a good thing to bring in Get others, from others perspectives yeah. too. And it's it's been researched that companies, the businesses that do take in uh, different perspectives have naysayers and devil's advocates mm-hmm, and things mm-hmm. in, in their boards they do get better financial um, returns bottom lines yeah. yes yes they do yeah. so it's uh, you do arrive at better decisions if you take them in more perspectives maybe you find out that you you don't need a bigger house you just need less possessions right know. well that well, as you were saying that just a couple of minutes ago one of the things that occurred to me is um because you were making the point that we need to uh, be more clear about what it is that we want. If mm-hmm. we do, as you say, jump to the conclusion that bigger in that case is better, we could do all the moving, get to the new place, and then realize we're still not happy because the real thing that of, of underlying concern mm-hmm. that, that we're experiencing where we are has been misdiagnosed as needing a bigger space. But if it, uh, it, in exploring, as you said, what, what, what am I really valuing here? Yes. Um, and, and then clarifying that, then maybe a bigger space is exactly the answer, but it, it yeah. also may not be, it could be, I just need, I just really want to declutter. It's hard for me to declutter, but that's yeah. what would actually make my heart and soul, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. my, please my eyes and my, my um, wasted time in a day just to, to declutter. Yes. Yes. So I think spending spending time in defining the decision situation before you go into all the gathering out alternatives and setting up criteria and weighing them and Mm-mm. jumping weighing to the, the risks and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And also, so that's one thing to really do the groundwork first. Otherwise, it would be like getting a train, getting a ticket somewhere and not knowing where you're going. It's difficult. Yeah to find the, the optimal way of means of transport if you don't right. know your destination. Right, right. You could just end up anywhere. Right. But then then also, I think it's it's important to bring in your intuition mm-hmm. in it. And, and in, how do you do that? When you, when you say it's important to bring in your intuition um, mm. and... But how is a, if a person, you know, if I if I sit here and then I think, OK, so I have to bring in my intuition. How do, how do I bring in my intuition? Um, well, first, first, we can just say that we're different from start. Some of us mm-hmm. are very, very intuitive and very likely to to listen in perhaps too quick and make mm-hmm. rash decisions. Some of us are, have very far, far to go, either because we're. That's our personality, or we've right. sort of trained ourselves not to listen because because of this ideal of rationality. Mm. So we tend to well, get away from from our intuitions because we think they will mislead us. Mm. But having said that, there are ways that you could practice listening to your intuition so that you become more more confident in in listening mm. to it. And you could try. You you could you could. You could test it in smaller, smaller decisions. Sure. Sort of, sort of get to know your gut feeling. But when you see someone, when, when you meet a new person, often, oftentimes you get the first mm. split second, you get an impression. Right. And instead of just sort of putting it aside and thinking, no, 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 there's nothing with that. Take it seriously and, and try to find out why did I... If, if you feel this is not someone I trust or this is someone I like, something like that, mm-hmm. or this is an unha- unhappy person, you, could ha- mm. you can have all sorts of kind of intuitions about someone when you first meet them. And take that seriously and, and try, to, try to embrace it. And if you can't find out from someone else, if it's, if it's to confirm your intuition. Right. Every time you every time you can confirm your intuition about someone, the, the, the more confident you become. Mm. And then 
at some moment it might be crucial for you if you if you are making a business deal with someone or if you're meeting and you're dating someone or things like that. Right, right. Then it's then it could be a matter of well, perhaps not life and death, but very important that you that you can trust your intuition. So so to practice it on a daily basis mm. is basis is a very good idea. And 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 so you're saying to in a sense to take notice of it to to as much as possible to be aware of our response that intuitive response and yes. then to endeavor to in a sense check it check it out and i mean somebody might be sad they might not be sad all the time but they might be having a sad moment so they may not mm-hmm. be a, an e or um putting it in no you know, no a a mil um you know <laughs> we need yeah, to cool, yeah. you know but but um but in that moment, you know, they could be just experiencing a moment of sadness for heaven's own, you know, they might have heard yes. some bad news, they could have just, you know, so we yeah. have to remember, keep some things in context. But so then um, that is, so you're recommending that we a be aware that we have an intuitive response. Mm-hmm. And then to, in a sense, try to check it out a little bit more, not just dismiss it not just to yeah. set it aside. Yeah. So so to be become more confident because you know intuition is not something magic. Mm. It's not something, you know, new age or something like that. It's it's no. very it's 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 how the brain works. Our system sort of our system one our in our quick mm-hmm. our subconscious and un, un, unconscious more primitive primitive maybe it's not the best word but Kahneman the the Nobel Prize laureate he 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 talks about two systems system two which is a rational uh, decision making logical mind which is slow thinking and system one which is the more the instinctive the the primitive the pre uh, quick the pre-rational stuff that happens before we even know that we've we've made a decision I mean marketers know all about that I mean, they've known yes. for years. Oh, yes, they, they do. They, they, they do. haven't had to wait for the papers to come out. No. <laughs> you know, no. they've they've relied on um, emotional. They, they they know that the rational rational process usually happens after the 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 mm. emotional decision to buy yes. has been made, and so they just go straight straight to yes. the. <laughs> they speak to the emotions because emotions is what makes the decision, and that's how our intuition works too, mm. because. Uh, you know about dopamine when yeah. when you get if you, if you have if you like chocolate I like chocolate if if I see if I have a piece of chocolate <laughs> here in front of me I get I get this expectation and it feels yeah. good because I'm expecting to feel it will taste good and when I take a bite I get a release of dopamine right right which rewards me for the expectations uh, as well as the taste <laughs> as the taste yeah, yes yeah. but the thing is that the expectations were, were fulfilled. Right. That's what makes the dopamine. Right. But if I right. expect to, to taste something good and I don't, I don't get it. I get something a potato or something like that. <laughs> th- then I won't get the dopamine, and I feel disappointed. And that is what. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so, so let's say that in, in social interactions, right. we we expect to find. When I talk to you, I expect you to be friendly, and smiling, and to give me a good feeling. That's what we expect because most people right. are, you know, we are friendly towards right. each other. Right. And so that's what my, that's a pattern. Our dopamine mm. neurons, they always look for a pattern. And right. the pattern in this case is, is, is made up of all sorts of your facial muscles and the hundreds of them and, and mm. expressions and tone of voice, all of these around things the that eyes, we can yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. And it's nothing we can rationally analyze, but this mm. pattern. If I meet someone that uh, in some ways, maybe some muscles are not, the pattern is not there. The pattern for a friendly strange, stranger's face greeting me is somewhat distorted. Mm-hmm. And the neural, my neural pathways, they, they recognize they it recognize immediately, that. Yeah. immediately. And they send then signals to the amygdala, which is the center for you know, mm-hmm. emotion. And the amygdala then sends out a lot mm-hmm. of, of, of neurotransmitters that gives me emotions. Mm-hmm. And I may get this sinking feeling in my stomach, something's wrong. They make, 
it, I may get this feeling of fear. This is something I should be afraid of. Yeah, so on, a scale of the, on a scale of one to 10, this person is really smiling or this person is just grinning in order to make me feel yeah. okay. Yeah. I mean, they, yeah. yeah. So that's what the, the immediate intuition tells me. Mm -hmm. And it is really, it is trustworthy. Mm -hmm. Because and, it's patterns that are recognized. Right. So then part of our decision making, part of the decision making process, then in that sense, is also how we interpret those patterns and what we do with them. Mm -hmm. Because some because I could say, you know, as you, you were saying that, um, I could say, well, the person's grinning at me, it's not a wholehearted smile. And I could say, but they don't know me. So they're just being, at least they're being, um, you know, basic friendly and greeting yeah. a stranger. And so then I could see that as totally okay. Whereas I could say another, another part of me, maybe who's been um, abused by people who mm. have given that same kind of grin that could trigger me to go run in the other direction. Yeah. Instead of, yeah. So the interpretation of those same patterns based on yes. our experience is going to be powerful, right? Right, and I think there are two, two aspects to that. Mm -hmm. The one is pra practice, that practice makes perfect sort of, yeah. uh, I mean, you've, you've heard about it. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it makes permanent. <laughs> say say the, 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 the doctor who, who is the specialist in interpreting x-ray, x-rays. Right, right. And what, when you and I see, if we just see a blur, right? But but right. when someone has been doing that for say twenty years, they see the patterns mm -hmm. immediately, and they can see from that blur. They can they can make an expert di di diagnosis for for whatever it is there. So so practice. So when you the more practice you get in 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 getting the patterns, the correct patterns, the more practice mm -hmm. you get in spotting the deviancies right, and how serious right. they are. So that's right. the one thing. But the second thing is also what you were, were elu uh, alluding at is our subconscious biases mm -hmm. or, right. or, or our own experiences mm -hmm. that if, if, if I've met someone, it might be I met someone who looked at, had a specific look, mm -hmm. specific eye color or skin color or hair length, anything. Or smell, I mean, you or know, smell, used a yes. certain perfume or aftershave or, or yes, yeah. yes. And that memory got deeply in, in my memory. Then when I see someone that's like that, that would trigger those emotions, mm -hmm. which may not at all be relevant to the present situation. To that particular, yeah. yeah. Yes. So it's even there, as you say, it's not black and white. It's, right. it's getting to getting to know both your yourself, your experiences, your subconscious biases. And getting more practiced in, in, in finding these patterns. Mm. And when I say get practiced, it's not, I mean, you could go through life meeting thousands of people and not getting any better at, <laughs> right, right. Right. at finding these patterns. But the, the deliberate practice is when you, you allow yourself to get feedback and to, mm. to reflect on what you see and, and when, when your intuition is right and when it's when it's trustworthy and when it's not so trustworthy in that way you can improve so in effectively then this um and and that is encouraged historically it's been encouraged for example in religions and now it's being encouraged through you know the practices of mindfulness which are making their way into university studies and things like that um, in fact, I, you know, I interviewed Helen, Ellen Langer some time back, uh -huh. who is, um, deals with mindfulness at, at Harvard and has, has done a lot of fascinating studies and is still active in that area. Um, but, but there's that, that sense that we gain some, we almost step back from ourselves and observe ourselves as a, as an actor. I mean, there's almost two parts of us doing that 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 work but having that objectivity to ourselves is what can allow us to cultivate that that um insight and understanding yes yes the you often use the word incubator or in, in, to incubate 
right. your, your intuition. So to sleep on a decision. Do you have right. that expression? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yes. To sleep and on it. <laughs> to sleep on it. Just sleep yes. on it. <laughs> yes. yes, sleep on it. Yeah. And that's where, where you sort of let, let go of your rational reasoning, where you can get stuck because you don't know. Right. But when you sleep on it, you, you let your... Um, let, let your other bits of your brain, other other impressions, right. your dreams maybe, or things that you see or read or hear, anything can can be connected to to this um, decision, and that gives your intuition some material to work with, to right. incubate. Right. Yeah. And when you wake up, sometimes you have the answer because it's because been working all night. Your brain's yes. been. It, it's interesting because I um, there's you know one of the revealing bits of myself. Um, one of the things that I do like to do is to play video of uh, virtual reality games. Right, yes. And uh, there's, okay, I won't go into the details of it, but there's one, one particular game that I've been playing recently. It's called Gorilla Tag. Uh, I, I'm a little biased. My son created the program, which is why I know about it. You know, mm. But anyway, the interesting thing about the movement in it, because it, it's not the kind of movement that is in this VR game is, is almost uh, what I would say is, you know, it's not the traditional kind of move your thumbs and teleport from one place to another that a lot of video games do but it's yeah. really native to the world that you're in so the movement is by your hands and your arms so you move yourself around the virtual world uh -huh. by the way you move your arms and you climb walls and, you know but it's all based on your actual physical movement so when you go in there the first time and you play mm -hmm. It's real. It's really because it's foreign and you've never done it before, and it you know it's just like learning anything. You go, uh, you know, I can't do this, and, and somebody yeah, says, you yeah. just go like this and climb up the wall. You go, oh, huh? and you try to climb up the wall and yeah. you get nowhere. You know, but the funny thing is, then you go to sleep for a few hours. The next day, you're better. Mm. There's this interesting, and and even to the point where. Um, uh, our son, you know, is just saying, look, just play for a while, then go and sleep. I mean, it's even, it, it, it's becoming that simple uh, an understanding, even mm. amongst people in that world that, you know, you want to improve, go out, test it out, try it, get some experience with it and go to sleep and wake up and you'll already be better. Um, so it's interesting how that, that dimension of our, that, that's the way we function as human beings. It's, it, it is, it is. There are so many studies on that for uh, how we learn things, not only mm -hmm. m m motor skills. Motor skills right, are right. very, That's very, just, yeah. uh, yes, but, but they are so, they are um, pri prime, primal? Primal, I mean, basic. Yeah, basic, very... yeah, in, in that, because yeah. th that they get consolidated. But even learning skills, when you learn a language right. or right. mathematics or whatever. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's the same thing. When you sleep, yeah. you get better. Yeah. So it's always good to have to sleep between between study sessions. <laughs> yeah, right. and, and not just cram right before you run into the exam room. No, no. Yeah. no. <laughs> and that goes for decision making too, to, right. to give yourself that space. That space, yeah. Yes. It's critical, it is. yeah, it is. It is. and and that's where um, you know leaving things till the last minute is sometimes mm, um, really a. It's great. There are times when we're going to leave things to the last last minute, but yeah, the, yes, where yes, possible, yeah, of course, yes. But some sometimes we think that when you when you have a big decision coming up, you think it, if you if, if you wait, it will become smaller and smaller and smaller, but it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> In fact, it tends to grow in your mind and your it life. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, we've already been almost 45 minutes, and I, I don't know whether right. we've gotten to anything <laughs> that you wanted to cover in this. I, you know, I look, you um one of because this is your area of expertise. I mean, you teach it, you you teach uh, at uh, at the university, uh, and I, I understand that you're also branching, you've done coaching for many years just of students and helping them to learn all different kinds of things. Tell us a little bit about, because you you are teaching now and building your own, you're doing some more entrepreneurial work out there, you know, I mean, just 
I mean, right. you're hanging up a shingle. I mean, everybody tends to do well, especially since we're not all, um, I guess increasingly we all do that because this it's really is what the gig, gig economy is a, you've heard, heard that term, maybe that's yeah, an American yeah. term, yeah, you know, where, active. yeah, I mean, even my kids that have got, they've got their main job, they do stuff on the side. I mean, um, we all do, yeah, the things that they like, their passion projects and the yeah. things that they really want to do sometimes. We, we can't always do that within the constraints of our, of our day job. Um, yeah. So we put that into, you know, the areas and, uh, you know, of our life. And so tell us a little bit about uh, your passion area, your, because I know that, I know that you're good. I know, I know that you're exploring different things. Tell us a little bit about that and what you're doing. Okay. Yes. Well, I, I, first I must say, I do love my work at the university and especially the, the one-to-one or one-to group with the students yeah. getting to know. And that's like, that, that is like coaching. Yeah. Get, helping people to get get clear on because that's what I do as a tutor yeah and as your that's your as job I mean it's what you yes. teach yeah yeah that's yes. wonderful help people get clear on their own path and reach their mm-hmm. goals and writing their papers and write their dissertations and what I wanted was to to bring that to to more people mm. because sometimes the academy is a kind of theoretical abstract right right especially in philosophy it could be not not always but but much of it tends that, tends to be that way tends yeah. to be yeah and i wanted to because i see the need especially for you know entrepreneurs and small business owners they're often alone right in the business not having a big you know corporate team or or specialist right. but right. You, you're you're left on your own to make all these decisions about your business and I felt that I could, I could help. I could provide this very hands-on decision-making process. Mm. How to how to create that process to, to know what to think about, uh, when to when to put in your intuition, how to make a risk analysis, when to how to handle other people. So I put together this course. This is a six-week online mm-hmm. course with. There's a lot of material. I, I've, I've recorded lectures and there are right. worksheets that you, yeah, that you, where you get to know, sort of ex- explore your values, explore your criteria, your situation, you know, all the things that we've talked about. And, and, right. all, more right. that. and we do have every week we, we meet for a, a live group session, question and answers and try to, to work together and share experiences. So that's what I wanted to do. So I started my... I started as a coach, just a coach business a few years ago. And now mm. this year I'm doing this course, which is, I'm, we've just finished the first, the first cohort of students and it's, Wonderful. it's been great. I've enjoyed yeah. it. And, and the students, they say that they've enjoyed it too. And lots of things. So I, I have to trust them on that. And I'm going to do it. <laughs> I, think, yes. I think you can trust them on that. Most yes, people I don't. So. I guess there are moments when we all do things to please, but mostly people don't offer comments. No, so, so I'm so happy. So, and yeah. I'm planning to, the, the next course start would be on the, the 5th of April, and I'm really looking forward to that. Well, well you know, if somebody was curious um, about exploring their values, about how that impacts their decision-making, about how to bring in their intuition uh, and, and realize that they're not crazy. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that it's actually a good thing to do um yeah what would they how would they get hold of you they could they would go to my uh, my website yeah which is uh, decisionmakingstrategy.com okay so and this- luckily actually i think i think we put that up uh just just for those who are listening, this is, you know, with Exceptional TV, and we can put below the video when there's a replay, but on exceptional, exceptional.tv, um, there's, you'll be able to find Erica, and her links are there. Um, so Great. that's, so you can use that, they can use that link, and they can contact you, they can get, I, I actually asked you to say, could you give them some, some little gift, right? Yes, yes, some little gift, yes. And I provided my, my <laughs> a PDF, 
which yeah. is called Two Simple Steps That Will Instantly Make You a Better Decision Maker. And you can download it. I think you've provided the link to, yeah. to download yeah. it. And that is, I give you some uh, two simple steps. It's just what it sounds like mm-hmm. to, to get ready to become a better decision maker. It's all about reducing your risk for decision fatigue so that you mm-hmm. have, still have willpower to make the, the important decisions and not wasting that. Huh. That's the first step. When you, when you say decision fatigue, I, that, that immediately makes me think of kind of, I guess we're getting into the spring after COVID a little yeah. bit over here, but the con- the concept of COVID fatigue and, and a lot of it was just um, just across the board. It just seemed like people were just getting tired of. Yeah, you could say A B C D. You know, you could fill up the whole alphabet. What they getting just at a level of fatigue, and so yeah. even. Um, you know, about what to do next and how can I do this? And, you know, life is so difficult. There's nothing fun to, you know, they're just this whole weight. So yeah, even just to alleviate decision yeah. fatigue. Um, fantastic. Yeah. Simple, but yeah. Yes. Wonderful. And, and yeah. And in that, in that PDF, there's also a link where you can book a call with me if you, if you wanted to. Okay, great. Oh, fantastic. Anyway, so again, um, that's very easy to get to exceptional.tv and look for, you know, I think at the moment on the front page or just do a search for Erica, uh, if if it's not so obvious, and she has her own little page there and all the links are provided. So uh, yeah, Yeah. we we like to be able to highlight those people who are making a difference in people's lives. And, and, And decisions, like the decision I make now, the, the impact is cumulative. I mean, it's not just the decision now, but then what happens the next time? And as a result of that, and as a result of that, and as a result, of, I mean, it ripples out through our whole life, right? So it does. It does. So it's. I think it's. I think it's so important. Yeah. To to work at your decision making skills, because it is a skill that you can improve, just mm. like play, playing the piano or. Mm, or mm practicing your French pronunciation but many people mm. seem to think that making decisions that's that's just something you I got do. it or you don't yeah. yeah yeah but you can improve and that's what I yeah. want that that's that's what I want to get out there and, and by, so that... by using creativity and your curiosity and your intellect and and all of this come together to improve your decision making skills mm. and and create a better world for yourself and for right. or for uh, everyone else because decisions Wonderful. are at the basis of whatever you do. Yeah, it's how we how we go through our days. I mean, it it's is. every every yeah. moment. It's we kind of set up a question and say, "So, what do I need to do next?" And yeah. then we answer our question. We have part of it is we we look at an array of things and then we make a decision about it. Yeah, we do. And then we do it all the time. We do it all the time. So <laughs> yeah. Do. So if it's a if it's a skill that can be honed and perfected. It makes a it whole is. lot of sense, and uh, yeah, it is. So I've uh, really enjoyed this discussion. It's been fun again, and yeah, the same, the same. <laughs> Carrie's always a joy speak talking to you. <laughs> yeah, and so um, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time um, to be here and to sharing this with people. And we'll make sure that it uh, that it's um, available for replay for those who want to come back and listen. And um, I know that people can, can connect with you after this. So uh, as I guess I'm just wanting to say at this stage, I, I look forward to seeing people come back to, uh, maybe we'll have Erica and some other, it might be interesting sometime to get some who would be some in, would would it be some interesting thing to try to get some a neuroscientist and uh, you know anyway a little little yeah. group together to have some mm. dynamic discussions sometimes so maybe we can we can think about that down the road a yeah. little bit that would be uh, interesting yes yeah yeah so we'll, we can think about plotting and planning for some for some some fun and informative um, and insightful because mm. I think a lot of this as we as we explore these areas. Um, it's uh, learning about ourselves. And yes. one of the, I've noticed over the years that people love taking quizzes about themselves. It's like, we love to look at ourselves in the mirror. 
I mean, mm-hmm. because constantly we're looking out and so we see the rest of the world out there, but to have some, some feedback on who we are and mm. mirror is just the physical one, the primordial, <laughs> the physical yes. stuff, yes. but getting feedback on our own personalities, our strengths, our weaknesses, you know, is, is really helpful mm. for then how we move forward. So um, having these types of things where we have a chance to do that reflection and get feedback um, mm. and think a little bit differently so we can decide differently is yeah. I think a lot of it's it's kind of fun in its own other way so thank it you is. so much for um, taking the time and for training all of those people because I, I would imagine I see ripples of Erica going out into the cosmos um, with all the changes in decision making that that that, that, that have gone on since you've impacted people's lives. That's my vision. I hope to make yeah. a difference in the world. So I, yeah. I hope so. Thank you so much for having me as your guest, Karen. It's, yeah. it's been a joy. And so um, I invite everybody back, same time, same place next week at Exceptional TV, and we'll see you there. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.